some people, if they'd like a machine that much, maybe they'd buy four, five, six machines. Well, how about 16? Here at RNG Precision in Wellingborough, they purchased 16 FANUP robo drills. Enzo, wow, 16 robo drills in your machine shop. That's amazing. Let's start from the beginning. What is it you're making here at RNG Precision? Well, in the beginning, we started with FANUC, just literally drilling and tapping castings. We've still got our 1996 T14 Robo drill, which is still in the workshop and still working. Um, so we took on the FANUC to help us with that because we had multiple quantities of just aluminium plates, which we were drilling and tapping. Uh, so that's what introduced us to, to FANUC. Um, so since that, it's evolutionized into medical components, motorsport components, and harder steels, um, and harder sort of exotic materials. Now, going back, actually, from that first purchase from Fanuc in 96? Yes. 96. Has it skipped a beat? How, how's that machine still going? Um, the machine is still going, touch wood. We don't use it, obviously, for the bigger components. We use it for... Uh, second op skimming off the back when it's come off the five axis spanner so it does still do the light machining and the final op so then it's still going it's still going for what its original purpose is but let's get forward to today yeah. and your five axis machines what made you go and take the leap up to five axis and why did you consider the robo drill for that job well good question it was something that fanuc um was were really keen to install in the in the factory because they were giving us a new way of machining, uh, of producing quicker, single ops, faster cutting. So they bought in a five axis machine, helped us set it up, helped us through with some of the components we were doing, proved to us that what they were saying was true, which from a, a reliability uh, point of view, we knew. But obviously, because we'd only had Fanix to do light jobs, they were desperate to prove to us that actually we can do heavy machining. So they bought in our first five axis. We had a go with it. We proved that it was working and it went from there. Really. Brilliant. And then how many more did you buy from there on then? So from the first five axis, we bought another four. Wow. Um, and then also just a, a flatbed one that does sort of just standard 2D work. So what features on the machine are you really utilising? For the parts that you're making uh, on the newer type of machine it's it's like exactly obviously the five axis that we're using it's the high speed cutting um, it's the flexibility of the machine to quickly tool change the uh, the, the the way it washes the swarf out it, it's just a, a really good overall quick machine that you can actually just throw anything on there now basically from aluminium to steels to uh, mnemonics and whatever and and it comes out brilliant first time the accuracy is amazing and it's holding tolerance too absolutely um, with we did a project with Fanuc about four years back where we were doing some MOD parts that were like three to four microns repeatability on holes Fanuc came in they bought in the flatbed machine which had every single option on it and we actually hit that first time um, straight out in aluminium. We then submitted it to the customer. We didn't get the contract, unfortunately, but since then the machine's been doing other things. So you don't get the thermal growth expansion on your spindle. For some reason, they're able to control it so good, and it's really good. I think basically it's because the way their tool change is set up, rather than a conventional tool changer, yeah. it's all very close. So. There's no room for expansion, so you find that once you've set it up and it's hold tolerance, it will hold tolerance all the way through the batch. And this, uh, it, these machines are fast. The cutting time, the, the chip to chip time is amazing. Yes, yes. Again, because of the tool change, you basically you've got no no tool change time. It's literally in and out quickly. Um, the way the tools insert into the into the spindle, the way the tools come out of the spindle. And also um, from home position to cutting position, very, very quick. And I know they've got the new technology, the BBT30 yes. spindle technology. Yes. They're aiming that really towards cutting the harder materials. And that's worked alongside your business, I guess. It has, because it's allowed us to create close contact on the spindle. It's allowed us to have balanced tooling in there, which then in effect 
allows us to hold tolerance not only in the aluminiums but also in the exotic steels. And any more improvements that you've noticed over the years? Well, in fact, Lindsay, there is a part that we're actually machining now on uh, the robo drill, which with the earlier machines we never would have managed to do that. And that's simply because of the way that they've come forward from the, the new taper, the new BT30, the, um, the faster machining, the more accurate spindles, and you can take heavier cuts now and, and do jobs that, again, as I say, you never would have thought of doing before. The biggest improvement is the interface, the software, the touchscreen, uh, the cutter compensation, the way you can tune the machines and the amplifiers. It is fantastic the way the engineers can come in. And if you've got an issue with finishing or vibrating or anything, don't ever think that it's a tool or it's the material call them in, they'll come in, they'll tune up the servos and I can guarantee you that the, the finish will come out as you want it. It's, they are such a, a machine that you can just adjust to what you need, it's incredible. It's safe to say you're happy with their service Love then. them, yeah, yeah. I mean the service, the backup, the spares, um, they're not, they'll come out the next day. So there's no, it won't stand still for long basically. Not that they have, I think from the 16 machines that we've got, Again, touch wood, I think it's only one of them that's had a serious issue, either that, they've been 24-7. And where are you going to go forward with uh, FANUC? People talk about lights out running. What, what's your thoughts on this? Yeah, the, the big push for the company now is to look at lights out manufacturing. Uh, we've spoken to FANUC about their uh, pallet changer equipment. We've got the machine set up side by side so we can put them in between and use that as a, uh, an, an after hours uh, machining uh, solution. So actually they're coming in next week to start discussions on that. So your automation is servicing two machines in one Correct. go? Correct, yeah. And these, are they cost effective machines? What's the return on investment in the ro on the robo drill? Okay, so obviously depending on how you go for it, um, I would say it's one of the most cost effective machines on the market for what it does. Um, again, you need to have the right jobs for it, like any machine. If you've got big, long-running jobs, then that's going to have loads of tooling in. It's not for you, but most of the stuff, 96% of the stuff we do is, is really quick, small turnaround. So return on investment is, is phenomenal because they're not overpriced. They're reliable and they, they are workhorses. From, from the very first one we bought where it was, you know, like a, an old screen and it had like the bu buttons underneath two, now the touchscreen, it's, they've come such a long way.